the big bush pig, the Suzuki tractor, the doctor. Whatever you call her, the DR650 has been around in its current format since 1996. And Suzuki thinks the design is so brilliant, the only changes made each year are colour and graphics. Or, they think new stickers will fix the suspension and other major design faults. Who knows? We have had a few DR650s over the years for motarding, dirt riding and adventure riding. And we reckon for the money it has to be one of the most flexible platforms around to customise just the way you want. Hey mighty DR, bestow your blessings upon us. Please bestow upon us your mighty power and talk. And please not let the mighty weight break our bones. This we ask in the name of Suzuki. This we ask in the name of Suzuki. Amen. Amen. In this series, we'll be working with full force racing components on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland to gradually transform the suspension in several stages to suit various budgets. In fact, once the big girl has the full suspension makeover, we're hoping to be able to test her on some really big jumps. We will also be looking at things like de-restricting the engine, reducing weight, fixing those ergonomics, tyres, getting a good fuel range, protective gear, and generally setting the bush pig up as an adventure bike. First up, we want to establish a baseline for how the DR650 performs, so we took it out for a bush bash. <laughs> Fuck, she's heavy. Off the showroom floor, the DR650 is fine around town and doing easy dirt roads. The suspension is far too soft and under damped for anything else, which we found out quickly. The stock suspension, whoa, is every bit as bad as I remember. Just, oh God, it doesn't handle jumps and I actually broke my foot years ago the stock suspension because she bounced out of control over a jump. Oh, fuck. This is ridiculous. It's bad. Oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> fuck. Fucking hell. She bounces out of control all the time. Even on the road, the front end dives alarmingly when you apply the front brake. In the dirt, it becomes a nightmare the harder you push it. The front forks are the old rod design, invented about the same time as the dinosaurs. So we'll be focusing on these a lot, as well as the rear shock as the series goes on. Bridgestone called the stock tyres trail wings. We call them death wings. They are a soft compound, so you would expect them to work well on bitumen, but they are only barely adequate and even start to slip when pushed hard on bitumen. On the dirt, they are next to useless. We dropped them to 15 psi for this dirt run. It was like skating on ice. Now, before we start whinging and whining too much, what do we like about the bush pit? She's cheap, which leaves lots of money to spend on mods. And it's a lot lighter than its nearest competitor, the KLR 650, which is more of a highway and easy dirt roads bike. The DR engine is a super reliable, air-cooled basic design with plenty of grunt and mid-range power. And it really starts to come alive with some basic mods we'll be covering. And once that dicky suspension is sorted, the DR650 handles beautifully and surprisingly loves to do wheelies. For short passes, the very low C height can be dropped even further through a simple linkage adjustment and adjusting the front forks. And the DR650 is so popular, there is an incredible range of aftermarket accessories and bling to turn it into a motard beast lightweight adventure bike or a bloody heavy dirt bike. 
Of course, the DR650 isn't really intended to be ridden on dirt tracks at speed. But, nonetheless, it's a lot of fun once you have upgraded your life insurance. The suspension and tyres are truly pathetic, but you can still tell the Suzuki does actually handle well, and she just needs a good pair of shoes and suspenders to become a foxy lady you will love to have between your thighs. First gear, ridiculously high. In fact, with that tractor-like engine, they could have spread the gear ratios a bit more. A lot of guys drop one tooth on the front sprocket, which works well, although the DR can just get a little bit buzzy at highway speeds. But I can't see Suzuki making any changes to their gear ratios, and for everyday riding, the standard gearing works fine. I like quiet bikes, but the DR is almost too quiet. I think the design brief for some poor Japanese engineer was make it sound like an electric bike. Oh, and use at least half a tonne of stainless steel too, so that all the weight on the rear will make it really easier. As you get closer to highway speed, it gets hard to know which gear you are in, because you just can't hear the exhaust note anymore. Later in the series, we'll look at exhaust options that keep the bush pig quiet, but de-restrict the engine and give her a subdued but nice throaty purr. Here are a few things worth looking at straight away on your DR. The bike comes with safety switches on the clutch and side stand. The engine won't start till the side stand is up and you've pulled the clutch in. These switches can and do bugger up. My side stand switch failed when my last DR was only six months old. Look, if your bush pig won't start, chances are it's these switches at fault, so always check them first. Or, if you are prepared to bypass these safety features, just disconnect them. Pause to read more. The ergonomics of the DR tend to be crap, especially if you like to stand on the foot pegs as the triple clamps push the handlebars back toward the rider too much. This can be partially corrected by rolling the bars forward, but then the switches on the bars roll forward too. There are these annoying little tabs that slot in the bars to secure them. If you do want to roll your bars forward, just file these little tabs away, position the switches where you want, and make sure you screw them down firmly. They will move around otherwise. As already mentioned, the suspension is hopelessly undersprung and underdamped. The only adjustment available stock is the compression damping on the rear shock. Most riders screw this all the way in for maximum damping, although you'll find in reality it doesn't make much difference. We will start looking at suspension options in our second video, starting right from the most basic budget mods through to the basic ways to revalve the front and rear. Bit by bit, we will slowly unleash the mighty beast that lurks within. As we've already said, our relationship with the big girl goes back a long way. So feel free to look at these bits of our previous bush pits. See yous around.